Hey everybody, Christopher Hunt here at the Colonial Ranch, and I wanted to um, make a quick video to go over the importance of um, box turtle care and, uh, and attention to their health. Um, the reason is because we have a box turtle in our care right now that was surrendered a little while ago, um, and that turtle, that box turtle came to us, and we've had to take it to the vet since then because it came uh, to us with a uh, vitamin A deficiency. Um, and I wanted to go over a few things about box turtle care. Um, for one thing, box turtles, obviously, they need UVB light. So outdoor care is better. Uh, where we live here in Indiana, um, we can have our box turtles out all year round. They can hibernate outside, uh, or brewmate, I should say. Um, outdoors during the winter time, we give them the proper setup and, and protective layer of um, uh, hay and leaves. And we actually create hide boxes for them as well for added protection, even though they don't have them in the wild here in their native uh, native range. But we we take that extra step to make sure that they're protected in the wintertime because it gets pretty cold here in the winter um, in Indiana, the Midwest. Um, so if they can live outside, that's great. If they can't live in outside, then, um, then they need proper enclosure and, and housing requirements indoors. Never, never, never keep a <clears throat> uh, eastern box turtle in an aquarium. Um, it's not good air uh, ventilation. It creates like a greenhouse to them. It, it's not a good environment for a box turtle. You should have that box turtle in some sort of like a tortoise house or a tortoise table, even um, with, you know, a uh, mix between uh, dirt and peat moss for humidity and things like that. So you need a, a proper substrate for indoor box turtle housing. I personally don't like cypress mulch because it um, it can be dusty. And a turtle that is constantly breathing in that dust can develop respiratory infections later on, turtles and tortoises. Um, some people have, you know, a lot of people say that they, they swear by it. They've never had a problem with uh, cypress mulch. I personally just don't like to use it just in case. So I like to stay as natural as possible. So um, I do use some um, uh, repti bark, uh, a little bit mixed in as well for humidity, but also um, uh, change it up a little bit. Um, then you come to the um, feeding requirements. So that's lighting and, and enclosures. Uh, feeding requirements, they need um, uh, multivitamin, calcium, stuff like that. Um, I actually give them, um, I don't know how you pronounce it, it's called rapashi or rapashi, whatever you call it. This is calcium plus, um, so it's a reptile calcium and vitamin. The reason I like it is because of the vitamin A in here. It's, it's uh, beta carotene. So turtles you can't just give them vitamin A and then absorb it naturally into their system. It doesn't work that way. So it's, it's already broken down into beta carotene, beta carotene. So their bodies can actually absorb it. Um, and it's a lot better for them. So I swear by this stuff and, um, it was uh, brought to my attention by the vet. Uh, my vet that I go to, uh, she's the one that, that told me about it because we have a lot of tortoises that come in with vitamin A deficiencies. So, um, you got to make sure that you, you feed them, um, a number of different foods actually. So you don't want to just give them all worms or all crickets because they're, they're, um, they're omnivorous or omnivorous. However you say that, um, they eat plants, uh, plant matter and, um, uh, protein as well. So they need worms, crickets, mealworms, things like that, but they also need, uh, vegetables. And I give mine fruit. I give them blueberries and strawberries and blackberries. We actually have a blackberry bush that we grow seasonally and then we freeze them. They get mushy after you freeze them, but that's another another video. Um, and we create a, a, a mash uh, using sweet potatoes and blackberries and worms and all that stuff. So we actually create mashes to do that as well. Um, and we mix that up. So we, we always feed them a variety of different foods for our box turtles so that, you know, they have a, a, a varied diet and it's not just stuck on one thing. So I want to show you now a, a turtle that came to us. Um, her name is Bud. Uh, we always keep the names um, that they come to us with. So, you know, the previous owners uh, makes them feel good and, and still connected. So we like to keep the same name. Uh, Bud is an Eastern box turtle that came to us uh, with a vitamin A deficiency. So let me show you her. So this is Bud. Bud is an Eastern box turtle. She's been to the vet and she's on the mend right now. Um, Bud here had a vitamin A deficiency when we got her, although the only sign that we had of the vitamin A deficiency since she was eating and her shell growth is actually pretty good. Um, and she was eating very well is, um, on the side of her neck where her cranial, uh, plate is where her ear, um, what you call a, a, an ear for a turtle is, uh, it was swollen with an abscess. Um, and that was due to the vitamin A deficiency. So that usually gives us an idea, but that was the only, um, symptom that she actually exhibited, um, 
and we gave her the proper care, uh, the care she came from, actually. She was living in a tote of water, I believe it was. Um, I think they had her for about 17 years or so. But she was living in a tote of water with a rock to get out of the water on. I don't know about her lighting requirements, if, you know, if she had proper lighting. But I do know that they fed her uh, Reptomen floating food sticks. Um, I don't know if they fed her other things as well, but I, I do know that for a fact they fed her that. Um, so she actually had a vitamin A deficiency for quite some time. Um, and once we took her into our care and we gave her the proper, um, the proper care and let her start living as a turtle, you know, putting her outside and, and uh, allowing her to enjoy the outdoors and get real sunlight and the very diet. And so proper care, uh, that vitamin A deficiency really started to show itself. Um, her eyes got swollen, uh, they got shut, they closed off. Uh, she got uh, an infection, respiratory infection because her immune system had dropped, it plummeted. She stopped eating. And uh, this here is actually a feeding tube that is going in uh, between her, her leg and her neck uh, that goes directly into her stomach so we can feed her because she wasn't eating. Um, she has since been getting better now. So they um, removed the, um, the abscess on her, the right side of her head. Um, and she's on antibiotics every three days, every 72 hours, we give her a shot of antibiotics. Um, and then we uh, are tube feeding her. Now, for the first time yesterday, she did willingly accept a worm on her own, um, and we, we covered it in um, this multivitamin and uh, calcium again. Um, and so she she is taking food on her own. Um, and so that was the first time yesterday. So really excited about that. She's been moving around. Her eyes are no longer swollen shut because we've been giving her uh, antibiotics in the eyes as well. She's doing a lot better, and she gets daily soaks in uh, warm water. Um, she's actually doing very well. She's on the mend, and I, I, I actually think there's going to be a positive um, outcome with her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed her now. So we undo this cap, um, and again, this goes directly into her stomach. Um, Trying to do this one-handed, of course. Um, and so that goes directly into her stomach, and then here we have uh, three milliliters of what we use, which is um, oxbow critical care formula. So I use this for bearded dragons and box turtles and, and, and things like that. Tortoises that can have more protein, uh, like the red foots and yellow foot. So you mix it up with water. I did a one to one ratio. I, I started out, um, with a two to one ratio. So, um, I did two scoops of, or two things of water to one scoop of, um, the, the powder, um, so that she was getting hydration as well. And she could only take about two milliliters the first, um, uh, the first couple weeks. Now she's up to three milliliters and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So she's getting more substance, more of the, the powder. And I'm not sure if I can do this one-handed, but I'm going to try. So <laughs> bear with me. So I put this in here. Oh, nope. It's not going to work because it's squirting out. So I'm going to need both hands. Let me see if I can do this. Now, let me see. Okay, so I did lose a little bit of it, but most of it went in. I'm making a mess here now. I'm making a mess all because it's one-handed. But um, so I did lose a little bit. Clean my hand off. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually, most of all of that went in there. So I only lost uh, just a, a tiny little bit. So now I'm going to fill this syringe with uh, water and shoot a whole tube of this uh, full of water to flush the tube because you don't want it to dry. If it dries, it'll plug up that uh, tube and then we won't be, be able to get any more food into her stomach. And also this extra tube of water that goes in there not only flushes the tube, but it also hydrates her too. So that's how we've been doing that. We do this every single day. I feed her every day. Um, and uh, again, I give her the shot of antibiotics uh, every 72 hours. And uh, yeah, she's, she's doing pretty good. So again, if you're going to have a, a box turtle, first off, don't take them out of the wild, please. Um, you devastate the wild populations when you do that. But if you do have a box turtle for whatever reason, um, I'm not against owning them. I think they're wonderful creatures. That's what got me started on box turtles. Um, but make sure you're, you're feeding them properly. You know, they need a varied diet, fruits, vegetables, protein, and switch it up. Don't give them the same thing every single day, every other day, whatever. Switch it up. 
Um, they need to live outside if possible. Natural sunlight you can't beat. It's amazing. That's what they're designed for. They need it. If they are indoors, you need UVB, UVA. Um, they need to be on a circadian rhythm, which means that when the sun comes up outside is when the light comes on. When the sun goes down outside, the light goes off. So a lot of people just set it 12 hours and that works where you can just have it on for eight to 12 hours. I recommend 10 to 12. Um, at certain times of year, that's great, but you want to create that cycle that their body is adapted for. It's, it's in their DNA. So, you know, um, the light time changes for all of us and it does for them too. So try to match up the normal cycle. Uh, but again, UVA, UVB, UVA is for plants, but UVB, uh, they need that type of radiation. Very diet. The enclosure is important. Do not do an aquarium, please. That's just horrible. And, um, uh, proper substrate. So you need something that'll hold humidity, but is not sopping wet. I prefer natural dirt and I, I mix it in uh, with a little bit of topsoil and like I said, peat moss um, so that it holds humidity. Um, give them a hide, you know, a box in there to hide in so that they feel safe. They need to feel safe and, and take cover. That's what box turtles do. I mean, look at her right now. She's, she's scared. She's not in the best, you know, the best mood right now. She's got a tube in her neck, but <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, Take care of your box turtles. Um, anyways, I just wanted to go online to or get on here to make this video to show you proper care of box turtles. Anyways, this video is a little bit longer than I wanted, but I wanted to show you Bud. I wanted to show you the care that she's going through. And, you know, uh, it gets expensive. When you when you take on turtles and tortoises like we do here at the ranch, um, you're taking on the care. We take sick ones too. And, um, you know, we do the best we can for them. And if you're going to do what we do, then you, you've got to you gotta fork out the money and you got to you got to do what's right for the animal because we're stewards for this animal. This isn't a pet for, for us. Um, we're giving her a, a life here and she's going to spend the rest of her life here on the ranch and we'll make her as happy and as comfortable as possible for the rest of her life. So I have nothing against owning box turtles, but do the right thing and take care of them, please. Um, take your, your uh, animals to the vet, even if they're healthy. We like to have a vet come out uh, sometimes they come out to us, sometimes we take them to them, and they do wellness checks every year. So just to make sure that everybody's doing well. So if this video helped you, please give it a like and subscribe. Um, hit that little bell icon so you'll be notified when I post more. Um, also, if you shop at Kroger or JC Food Stores or Food for Less or any of these Kroger-owned um, stores, including Ralph's, um, log into your account um, and go to Community Rewards and type in Cloning Ranch. Select us as the charity, enroll. And then every time you shop, you use your alternate ID, your phone number, or your card, and uh, Kroger, the Kroger stores will, will donate to us. So that helps the ranch as well. Um, like and subscribe. Give us a follow for more. And uh, thanks for watching.